Hello, my name is Tim Allen. I am a heavy equipment teacher at Centennial College in our School of Transportation. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how a basic hydraulic circuit works. To do this, I'm going to use a training aid that we've built. We're calling this our hydraulic bicycle crane. It's an old exercise bike that the phys ed department was throwing out because it was in such a state of disrepair. We in the heavy equipment lab decided to repurpose it into a device that we could use to teach students and the hydraulic bicycle crane was born. As you can see, it's a standard exercise bike with some hydraulic components attached to it. To start with, we mounted a hydraulic tank that we found in our spare parts bin. This pipe out of the bottom goes directly into a vein type hydraulic pump. This pump is rated at 4 gallons per minute at 1200 RPM. With this flow, we can get about 1 gallon per minute at a comfortable pedaling speed. There is a calculation as to how much work the system is doing. The system pressure in this machine is limited to 750 PSI. At that pressure, the hydraulic horsepower rating for our machine is 750 PSI times 1 gallon per minute. To get that into the same units as mechanical horsepower, we have to divide that number by 1714. This tells us that at a decent pedal speed and all of the oil going over a relief valve, we would have to generate just more than a half a horsepower of work. If you ever get the chance to pedal our bicycle, you'll see that it takes a lot of effort to maintain that level of work. From the pump, the oil comes up through this first hose and into the yellow control valve. The yellow control valve is for the outriggers that are mounted to the front of the machine. Earlier on in the project, we realized that the level of work that was being done using this machine warranted that the front of the device needed to come off the wheels and onto some sort of rigid legs. To do that, we fabricated a couple of outrigger arms. We installed two two-inch cylinders connected in parallel. There is a leg at each side of the front. When we pull the valve one way, we redirect the pump oil from the output port of the pump to the barrel end of both cylinders. The leg with the least amount of resistance always starts to move first. Only when they both feel the resistance of the floor at the same time does the pressure start to increase. Only when the pressure increases to about the same value as the weight of the machine divided over the area of the piston does the machine start to lift off the ground. Pressure increases quickly until it exceeds the value of the relief valve. The relief valve directs the oil to the valve output port, but not before providing enough resistance to flow to build the pressure to 750 PSI. The operator is now expected to release the control handle, which allows the oil to get to the output port unrestricted and therefore not able to build up pressure in the circuit. If we put this new value of 0 PSI in our horsepower equation, we see that very little work is now being done. We can also now tell that we aren't doing as much work, because as you will start to see, it's a lot less effort to pedal now. As the oil comes out of the yellow control valve, it passes the pressure gauge as it enters the tandem valve stack. This is also an open center valve. If we do nothing at all to the controls, the oil goes straight through the valve and off to the blue valve. This double control valve is essentially just two single valves bolted together. They both share the oil that's being supplied by the pump. If either of these control valve circuits were to sense pressure beyond its relief valve setting, that circuit would redirect the flow of oil through its common relief valve to the output port of the valve. The black valve on our stack is controlling the flow to the bidirectional hydraulic motor that controls the swing function of our arm. The red section of the valve controls the flow to the red stick cylinder. The last valve in the series is the blue one. The blue valve controls the flow to the single boom cylinder. Beyond the blue valve is just a hose back to the reservoir. If all of the valves are in the neutral position, the oil makes a very simple circuit from the pump unrestricted through all three valves in series with each other and back to the tank. This whole circuit would probably take way less than one second of time to actually complete. The pressure gauge is monitoring the resistance to flow between the outrigger valve and the swing motor. At this position, the gauge will monitor the pressure in only the valves that are downstream from it. The outrigger valve is upstream, so the pressure will not be felt in that circuit. If any of the downstream valves are moved, the pressure that is required to overcome the force being exerted by the load will be felt at the pressure gauge. By moving a function against different levels of force in the way a full-size machine would be subjected to in the heavy equipment industry, we can see that it takes different amounts of pressure to overcome the different weights that we may have to lift with the crane. As the boom is raised, the pressure gauge tells us that there is about 100 psi required to lift the boom. When the hook contacts with the load, the force required to lift the load is suddenly increased. Since we can't change the area of the cylinders to compensate for this extra work requirement, we need to increase the pressure. Remember, there are only two things that we can do to increase the amount of force from a hydraulic system. We can increase the area part of our equation, or we can change the pressure portion of our equation. Changing the pressure proved to be a much more practical solution. So far we have taken a look at what it takes to create enough force to lift a load. 
Another important factor is the speed that the work gets done. The speed of a hydraulic system is directly related to the flow of the oil from the pump. Since our pump is of the fixed displacement type, there is only one way to increase the flow from it. We need to speed the pump up. A fixed displacement pump delivers a very specific amount of oil with each revolution of the shaft. To get more oil delivered, we need to turn the pump faster. This is not the case with more modern oil pumps. A variable displacement pump can change the output flow simply by changing the amount of oil that gets delivered with each revolution. This provides a method of adjusting hydraulic horsepower requirements without changing the speed of the prime mover. Another way to change the speed of the implement is to only direct part of the flow from the pump to the cylinder or motor. We can do this by moving the control lever only part way, directing only part of the flow from the pump to the actuator, and the remainder of the flow continues on to the tank, just as it would if the valve were left in its center position. In the field of heavy equipment design, much emphasis is placed on a term called cycle time. Cycle time is the time it takes to perform one task. The speed that an excavator swings from the trench to the dump truck and back again, for example. This time is the result of the flow rate of the oil getting to the swing motor and driving it. Of course, since the flow rate of oil is one of our parameters for measuring hydraulic horsepower, the faster the machine needs to move, the more horsepower it needs from the prime mover, in this case a diesel engine. If you were to operate our crane here at Centennial College, you could see that it takes more pedal effort to move the boom faster than it does to move it slowly. This concludes the description of the hydraulic system of our bicycle crane. If you could keep up with the terminology and you understood the way a simple circuit works, then you are well on your way to understanding a more complex hydraulic circuit. Thank you for watching.